Alright everybody, this is Eternal Blade here and welcome back to section 3 of Concept to Creation. Today we will be focusing on making the cutting board in our scene. You can see one there, there's another one back there, and that's sort of a similar one, very close, and then a couple more hanging right up there. Okay, so I'm going to bring my reference image off to my left hand screen and I'd suggest you do the same or print it out. And let's begin. Uh, first thing I want to do is make a box. We're going to turn on auto grid here and just sort of sketch out the general size that you want this thing. So you need to take into account perspective. So it's kind of hanging. Yeah. Wow, I just realized something about this entire scene. Well, that is interesting. So what I realized was. This is extruded outward, like so. Huh, how did I not realize that this whole time? Okay, well, either way, that's what it looks like. And let me just go over here and make sure it still looks good. I guess that's about where it's got to be. Okay, well, good. I uh, didn't think about that, but I don't know why it looks like that, but that's what it's supposed to look like. So, anyway, back to our cutting board. Um, so this is kind of like, or sort of something like this. And we're going to shrink it just a bit, position it, sort of rotate it a little more. Not quite that much. Shrink it a bit that way. I'm just trying to match it up to the perspective of our other image we have, or the reference image. Okay, it's actually sort of almost squarish. That looks like it'll be pretty good. Okay, so next what we can do is isolate selection. And let's go to perspective here and turn off our safe frames. Or you can just use Shift F, press Z to zoom in. And we're going to convert this to an editable poly with my hotkey that I use, Control Alt Q. Okay, let's uh, take this, connect with two segments. Okay, and let's sort of do something like this. We're going to Extrude this a few times. Okay, go to the top view here. And we're actually going to rotate this back to where it was so we saw it was 40 degrees. Okay. Now we're just going to sort of attempt to make um, the same shape that we have. Okay. Or the same. So a round bulbous shape with a hole in the center. Okay. Looking pretty good. Bring this in and we can sort of move some of these. Strange, my computer was just making noises. Don't like it when they make noises. Noises are bad. Okay. Click your polygon, extrude. Twice should be good. Press 1 to go into vertex sub object mode. And actually, I guess once would have been enough. So delete. Select your border here and cab it. Okay. There we go. And now there is a hole in the center of this. So what we're going to do is going to take our vertices here and going to cut from this one all the way down to sort of here. Okay, and then this one down to here. I'll straighten these up in a bit. Uh, go to your perspective mode and cut the same on the other side. I'm just right clicking or left click and right click to edit the cut. Okay. Go to your front view here. F3 and actually what we want to do is select 
those lines, control click. Now we can see what we're actually working with here. So press R and scale them in. R and scale them in just so we get the lines nice and straight. Okay. W, F3, P for perspective, Z to zoom in. Now let's click uh, these two over here, these two, and you want to hit bridge. Now we'll make this nice box shape here. Go into the top viewport, and we're actually going to click all these lines here, connect, and we're going to want two connections. Sort of bring the pinch in just a bit. All right, now what we can do is bring these out. Okay, and then press R and sort of make a circular shape here. And let's make the hole just a bit smaller. Well, I think it's this whole thing that needs to be smaller, not just the hole. Oops. Redo that. Okay, let's shrink this whole thing down just a bit and move it sort of inward. And press R, and there we go. Now we've got a fairly good, let's actually bring these up just a bit, give it a little bit more roundness, and maybe. There we go. I'm just trying to round it all out make it look the way it should look okay and there we go there we have it so let's end isolation mode press E and we rotated this 40 degrees so let's go 40 degrees back the way we came go to our camera and there we go now we have our nice cutting board and it looks just about perfect um, what we want to do though is take see here. Well, I'm debating if I want to chamfer the edges on this or not. kind of want to, but at the same time I kind of don't. We probably should though. Q. Let me do that. How on. Okay, well, I think just because we're trying to save polygons here, we can eliminate that step since these are pretty diffuse textures anyway. So next let's go to an unwrap UVW. Okay. And we're going to select, let's see here, open your UV editor. Let's press control A for now, mapping and flatten mapping. Let's see what we get. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, so let's select these and all of this. All right, press E, rotate it 180 degrees. W, just move it right on top of the other one. Should align pretty perfectly. There we go. And then what we can do is sort of gather the rest of this stuff. Okay, mapping, flatten mapping, okay. We'll sort of expand. Well, actually we don't want to do that, let's undo that. Let's figure out where these pieces go. So, just seeing here, so this edge to this edge. Right, let me move these sort of out of the way. Okay, move this into the center here. That kind of goes up there. So, edge number one, let's see. So that goes to there. So we're going to take this, move it, and just flip it around. And what we can do is go from here. Well, you can see it on this checkerboard background. Um, there we go, now we can see things. 
at one edge. Okay. Hit the stitch to source button and it'll stitch to where it's supposed to go. Which I don't know if that's the right look. Yeah, there we go. Well, why is it stitching over there? Feel like it's not supposed to go there. Hmm. That is what it should look like. Not that it matters much, but just in case. So this is going to be good to go. Just move it over here. And again, you could stitch these, but I think for what we're doing, this will work just fine. And this is going to be the bottom. Let's see. There we go. So rotate it. 90 degrees and bring it into position sort of over there and let's see that should be good that's gonna be good these side pieces here let's see so it's gonna go it's gonna be rotated like this 90 degrees and sort of over here and these don't need to be touching at all uh, since all these are going to be seams let's see this is going to go sort of over here it would be nice to connect these together so let's let's do that so 90 degrees and we'll bring this over here and then this will probably go to the other side yes it does okay so I'll rotate that bring it to the other side all right this is going to go hmm all right so we'll go over here connected there I'm curious about this stitching though as to why it does not want to stitch my things oh, there it goes now it stitches interesting okay put that in just a bit all right and then we've got these couple little pieces here which are going to be the internals so we'll stack those on top of each other Okay, and it's this part, the sides, and the other pieces. So I think that one of these sides should link up. There we go. So we'll put it sort of up right there. Okay, and we will move it into position. All it leaves us with is this little piece, which goes on the other side up here. And we are going to rotate it 90 degrees like so, move it into place, and that'll be good to go. And this will be the little center piece, so we'll move it sort of into the centerish area. All right, click your box there, and oops. Just sort of move it into position. We'll scale it as large as we can get it. So right about there. Okay, go to Tools, uh, Render UVW Template, and let's render this out. 1024 by 1024 is good. You'll get your secondary display with our template on it. And then it disappeared. There it is. And well, what the heck? Okay, well when you get it, uh, just save it out as. Um, let's see here. Textures, this will be cutting board. Okay. 
and I'll call this home for the UVW. We'll save it as a PNG. Save. Okay. And now that we have that, uh, we're going to go hop right over into Photoshop. And I'm going to speed up the texturing process while I uh, discuss it. All right, so let's head over to Photoshop. So now that we're in Photoshop, uh, let's start by putting just a base layer down. I'm putting a kind of gray background layer. You don't really need to do it, but then I switch it to brown right here. This is going to be kind of for the basic uh, structure of our wood. And I'm going around and naming all my layers just so that I have a good uh, idea. And here I use a filter um, wood grains or grains. And this will give me the basic grain texture. I have one dark brown and one light brown. I then go ahead right here and use the liquify tool and sort of move it around with a big brush, use the swirl brush to make knots, and use the bloat tool to make them a little bigger. So I increase the uh, texture size here and just to give it kind of a more stylized look, not quite as small grains. Uh, now on my um, sort of highlights layer, I'm going in with a slightly lighter color brush, you know, it's a brown color but a slightly lighter color. And just tracing along all the edges of the wood, kind of like a natural, um, you know, specular highlight just on the edges, right where the light would reflect. You know, it's nothing too intense. Uh, it looks like a little bit like a drawing. Uh, but I go in later with the smear tool and kind of smear it out just to give it a bit, you know, less hairy look. I guess is the, the technical term for it. So I just save it as a diffuse texture, and I'm applying it just using a regular viewer material applying my diffuse texture and just checking to see that everything lines up. So now I'm making an adjustment layer there and lightening up the wood. It seemed a bit too dark the first time I did it. So on my details layer I'm adding with a light brush these very light scratches almost like a knife would cut in and leaves that little mark. And then with a sort of black or very dark brown brush I'm getting these kind of darker um, cuts in the side almost like a you know the, the cutting board got nicked and there's sort of these darker you know crevice crevice shapes. And then uh, here I go with the burn tool. I'm sort of burning all the edges of the cutting board just to give it a bit darker look. And at all the dark portions of the wood where you can see the kind of darker wood grain, I'm going in and burning them. Just to give it kind of a more contrasted feel just so you, you can really, the colors pop. Okay, I'm applying a um, bevel and emboss uh, layer to the cuts, the details, just so they look actually like cuts in the diffuse texture. And I'm not going to solely rely on a bump map for their detail, although I do apply one later. We're just carrying on with the burning here, um, adjusting the bevel and emboss a bit. So I'm just continuing to render it out. I use the render region window just to speed things up um, once I realize there's no point in rendering out the entire image. Okay, so now I've saved this off as a separate map called bump. And I'm just going to try to isolate the scratches and gouges that I made. Um, so right here I'm just trying to figure out how I want to really bring out, you know, bump up the contrast and whatnot. And I eventually figure out that I want to just copy that um, scratch layer off to another uh, canvas. And I'll put a white layer um, beneath it. So you can see right here I copied it to another canvas, I put a white layer beneath it. And I'm just using the brightness and contrast and decreasing the contrast to really bring out those dark spots. I name it bump and I apply it to the bump map. And I end up going with a 30, um, which will lead me into uh, the next little section here. Okay guys, so here we are. Um, here's the final image uh, that I've created here. Uh, so it turned out really good. Um, you can see we have the nice bump textures, the wood grain, you know, the knives, even the knife cuts on the board. Uh, so let me close that and let's do a quick rundown of the texture here. Uh, just very simple, we have the one um, bump map that we made of the knife cuts and the general um, diffuse texture. And um, you've seen me go through the entire process here, um, but we pretty much just have you know, the, the outline, the white outline, the small cuts with a bevel and emboss layer, and we have um, the base uh, wood layer, which is just a fibers um, adjustment layer that I put with a liquid, uh, liquidize, I believe that's what it's called, liquify, liquify um, um, filter, and we sort of made some knots and made the wood grain a little bit uh, different just to give it a different taste. 
So I'm going to finish off this scene here. We're just going to copy these into a few different locations here. Go to the top view. And it looks like there's going to be one sort of on this table as well. And it's going to be in the other direction. Sort of over here. Maybe resize it a bit. Go into our camera. And so it still needs to be a bit smaller. And we can actually move it over here while we look. So it's going to sort of go over here. Interesting, this perspective gives it a strange look. Turn angle snap off. And maybe it is going to be just a bit bigger. Okay, there we go. And then we're going to have sort of one over here ish near where the knife is. All right, and this will be a slightly smaller one kind of facing away like this because you can't really see the wooden eye thing in it. And it'll be right next to these sort of teapot structures. Okay. And that one looks like it's actually going to be a bit bigger. And local, and maybe make it just a tad wider. Okay, there we go. And did we not copy that when we moved it? We didn't. Damn it. So copy this one back over. Completely didn't see that. Okay, rotate it just so we get the same rotation. And that looks pretty good right about here. It's got to be a little closer. Yeah, right about there is probably good. Okay, and then what we've got is a couple of these hanging sort of on the wall. Rotate it like so, and then rotate it up. 90 degrees here and place it sort of on this pillar here you can just see where we are so let's hang it up a little bit above this cabinet so right about here and there's gonna be two of them so one of them is gonna be hanging pretty much straight maybe we'll turn it just a bit and then make another one, a copy. Okay. And we're going to scale this one down a bit. Alright. And move it into position. So that the eyes sort of match up on these. If go to the left hand view, we should be able to see the eyes a bit better. Okay. That should do. Then we're going to sort of twist this one um, just a little bit. It looks like it's going to be twi we'll twist it to the right. Okay, move it back to line it up again. And there we go. Looks like we've got the cutting boards in place. Um, let's render this out one more time and see what we've got. All right, here we go. It's looking uh, really, really, really good. Um, the only thing I want to do is just for this um, cutting board right here, since it's kind of like a, a hero cutting board, is I'm just going to ever so slightly bring one of these polygons in. So yes and hold. And then just kind of move it in just a bit to give it a bit of a sort of wave or wavy appearance. There we go. Uh, I'll do one more quick render. All right, here we go. Uh, now you can see just a very slight kind of curve in there, and that's exactly what I wanted. Uh, now one other thing here that I wanted to do is just sort of work on the sun for a second. So we're going to unhide all, and here's our sunlight, and just sort of see how we can. 
I wonder how I am able to do this. Because our door is sort of here. And our sun is supposed to be shining through said door. It seems like the only way to get our thing to work is if we sort of move everything back a bit. Kind of to here. Okay. And let's grab all of our little polys in here. Sort of scoot them back. Okay, I'm just trying to get the light uh, source to line up to where it should. A little better. I don't, I don't really know how that's even possible. Unless this point here maybe needs to come in just a bit. No, that won't even affect where the sun is. Unless this countertop doesn't go that far. don't really know. It needs to go to at least here. Somehow, maybe there's a window or something. Maybe it's coming in through a window. Is that possible? Maybe there is no door on that side and the door is kind of over on the other side. So assuming that it's a window, what would happen? So you need these two you know, sort of go up. No, that doesn't really help you too much. doesn't help you much at all. Maybe if this door slid over. Well, the problem is our counter is just in the way. The light needs to be coming from sort of right here. But well, we'll look at that in a later part. So um, I want to thank you guys for watching. Um, feel free to like and subscribe. And I will see you next time.